1950s and the early 1960s are often viewed as a golden era in American history. There was a tremendous economic boom, and there was a, a sense, at least among mainstream society, of unity as the jingoism and nationalism is, uh, fueled by the Cold War takes over. But of course, as uh, these types of environments do, it blinded us to the, to the problems um, uh, underneath the surface, and maybe more significantly, to the problems of those left out of this great uh, boom and this now unified culture. The growth of the 50s dwarfed that of the 20s, and you can see here, just by the upward slope of this first graph on the top uh, left, how much steeper the growth of, of the GDP was in the 50s and the 20s. From 1945 to 1960, GDP is up 250%, and that was after the enormous growth uh, uh, that we saw during World War II. GDP goes from 200 billion to 500 billion. Unemployment is at 5% or less throughout this period, with inflation averaging 3%. And so we see uh, one of the two greatest periods of economic uh, growth in our country. We also, by the way, see a, 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 a decrease in income inequality. You see during the 1920s and then later, um, after the 19, after uh, really about 1980, you see income inequality becomes uh, much more dramatic in the country again. But during this period that we call the Great Compression uh, of the war years and then through the 50s and 60s uh, in, the, in most of the 70s, we see uh, incomes in this country becoming more and more equal. What caused this? Well, one thing is high government spending. Um, government spending is still high from leftover New Deal programs, uh, building schools, of course the housing boom, um, uh, which actually has a heavy government component to it, veterans benefits from the war, welfare programs put in place by FDR uh, uh, during the Great Depression. Um, during this period we'll also build the interstate highway system, but mostly government spending is high because of military spending, and again, that's because of the Cold War, specifically um, World War II and the Korean War. But even after the Korean War ends, we st military spending still remains high, as you can see according to that graph. Another cause is the baby boom. The birth rate, which had been falling throughout the 30s, and it was fairly low during the war itself, will, uh, as most people know, uh, dramatically spike after the war. Um, really beginning right at the end of the war, uh, this baby boom peaks in 1957, and we generally consider it to be over by 1960. As you can see on the graph there, by 1960, we've reverted to almost the average. The population is up 20% in the 1950s, from a, uh, uh, and we will jump from 150 million to 179 million. And one of the things that this leads to is an increase in consumer demand. Uh, not only are there more people, but people who settle down and start to build families tend to spend more money, and this is going to stimulate the economy. If you look at that population pyramid there on the right, you can see the significant chunk of the population in 1960 that was below 14 years of age. In 2010, just a few years ago, you can again see that bulge from the baby boom is still there. And of course the idea here is these soldiers had gone off, they had fought in a war, they had seen the world, um, and they wanted to come home to some peace and quiet. They wanted to find a nice girl, settle down, and start a family. And because they're all essentially doing it at the same time, the end of the war, um, that's why we have this uh, explosion in births. This leads to the growth of the suburbs. It stimulates, uh, once again, like in the 20s, the automobile and the construction industries. There's a 47 increase in the suburban population of America in the 1950s. Car ownership doubles. And road construction is also a major force as cities begin to sprawl further and further out. The next suburb has to be built past the last one, and so the cities begin to grow and expand in every direction. You probably can see this where you live. The economy grows 10 times faster than the population for 30 years after the war. Average Americans see their purchasing power rise by 20%, which would be nice, wouldn't it, uh, by 1960 over 1945. Our purchasing power for the average American is double that of 1929, right before the stock market crash. The growth of the 50s is way more dramatic than the growth of the 20s. And America will become the country with the richest, highest standard of living in the history of the world, and it's not even really close. That's what the 1950s meant uh, to mainstream Americans.
Once again, we're going to see this post-war growth, just like uh, New Deal programs and World War II growth, is going to disproportionately impact the American West. Uh, remember, the American West had been dramatically in, improved and changed by New Deal investment. Many of the uh, CCC and the WEPA type programs were done out there. And also remember that it is the West that is crucial to World War II because we're fighting the Japanese and the Japanese are off the Atlantic or the West Coast. Government projects are still abundant in the West and particularly in California and Texas whose politicians are masterful at getting government manufacturing projects put into those states. A lot of defense spending and research goes into those states. We also th this time see the oil boom in Texas and Colorado, uh, which turn these into um, extremely uh, uh, healthy economies. Dallas, Houston, and Denver become major hubs um, uh, in, in this new U.S. economy. The West will respond by making big investments in education. And the state university systems, of particularly Texas and California, become national leaders. Uh, the University of Texas, UCLA, Cal, um, all, all become major uh, uh, schools, very prestigious schools. This increasingly educated population attracts technology into these. And, and uh, Texas uh, and, and California are two of the great uh, 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 incubators and today two of the great centers for the uh, uh, high technology boom that is going to continue to fuel the American economy uh, right up to the present. And of course the climate. Um, particularly Southern Carolina, uh, I'm sorry, Southern California and uh, uh, parts of uh, Nevada and Arizona uh, will become um, incredibly desirable places to live, particularly for people who live back in the Northeast and the Midwest who are simply tired of dealing uh, with the cold, uh, snowy summers. But L.A. was something else altogether. L.A. was a phenomenon. Uh, from 1945 to 1950, 10% of all new businesses in America were, be, were begun in Los Angeles. The population jumps 50% uh, between 1940 to 1960, and it simply becomes the most significant uh, 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 up-and-coming city in the country. And it's on its way to becoming, of course, uh, uh, one of the two uh, major cities in the United States. Booming business and low unemployment leads to a fear of strikes. Owners work with the unions, trying to cut the strikes off before they happen, and we see factory wages rise to $80 a week on average. By December of 1955, the uh, American Federation of Labor and the uh, Congress of Industrial Organizations merged to create one super union, the AFL-CIO, under George Meany. He's up there on the top left. This is the high point of labor in America. And labor will begin to decline after this period. Uh, uh, investigations into unions will reveal uh, significant corruption. In 1957, Congress investigates the Teamsters unions. Now, those are the people who transport goods. Um, and their president, David Beck, is found to be uh, corrupt, skimming money off the top, putting it in his own pocket. He is replaced by Jimmy Hoffa, the man up there on the, on the top right. And the feds will investigate Hoffa uh, for 10 years until indicting him in 1967, after which he will disappear. And today, we're still not entirely sure what happened to Hoffa. The United Mine Workers will also undergo, one of the, the, the great uh, historical unions in America, will also undergo their own scandals and fall to corruption. And unions will begin to develop something of a bad name, uh, uh, at least for non-union members. And they will begin to decline in significance after having their most important uh, periods of influence in the 1940s and 1950s.